Today we're going to talk a little bit about Ohm's Law in series. We're going to start with a brief review of Ohm's Law and also of series circuit resistance. Then we're going to talk about what is Ohm's Law in series. We're going to ask why do we care about all of this? How does it work? We're going to see how we can actually use Ohm's Law in series circuits. And then we're going to do an example of that. Finally, we're going to recap what we learned. So let's get started. Let's begin with our review. Remember, Ohm's Law says that current equals voltage over resistance, I equals V over R. And we also looked at series circuits and how to, we figured out how to find their resistance. So we said that in a series circuit, the total resistance is the first resistance plus the second resistance plus the third resistance and so on and so forth. So now let's talk about what is Ohm's law in series. Well, imagine that there's a series circuit that looks kind of like this. We can use Ohm's law to find the voltage and current for each component. Now let's talk about why we would care about this. Why, why do we want to know about Ohm's law in series? Well, basically, many circuits involve series components. Ohm's law helps us to understand the voltage and current in other people's circuits, and it also helps us to design our own circuits. Now let's talk about how we use Ohm's law in series circuits. The basic strategy is that we know how to do Ohm's law with one resistor, and we know how to simplify a series circuit down to one equivalent resistance. So what we do is that we start with a series circuit, we simplify the resistors down to just one equivalent resistance, and then we do Ohm's law on that equivalent resistant circuit. And then we use the knowledge that we gain from that circuit to figure out what's going on in the rest of the circuit. Imagine you have a circuit that looks like this. It's got two resistors in series and a power supply. The first resistor has two ohms of resistance. The second resistor has four ohms of resistance. Let's see how we could use Ohm's law to figure out the voltage and current for this circuit. In particular, we want to find all of these values in the circuit. The total voltage, the total resistance, the total current, the voltage across R1 and R2, and the current through R1 and R2. So let's see how we can do this. Remember, our basic strategy was to first simplify that circuit down to one equivalent resistance. Before we get started, let's see if there are any of these quantities that we can write down. The one that I see is the total voltage. The total voltage is the voltage that's coming from the power supply, and we can see that that's 18 volts. We can just read that right from our diagram. So we can write that down right away. Now let's try and apply Ohm's law to this series circuit. Remember, our basic strategy was to simplify the circuit down to one equivalent resistance and then find the value of that resistance. So let's do that. So we can redraw this circuit as a series circuit with just one resistor in it. Now we need to find that total resistance for the circuit. So remember, R total equals R1 plus R2. So in this case, that's 2 ohms plus 4 ohms, and that gives us a total of 6 ohms. So we can write that down on our diagram, and we can also write that on our list of quantities that we're trying to find out. The total resistance is 6 ohms. Now that we've found the equivalent resistance for this circuit, we want to find the total current for this circuit. And since this circuit has just one resistor, and we know how to do Ohm's law with just one resistor, we can find that total current using Ohm's law. Remember, Ohm's law says I equals V over R. So in this case, that's 18 volts over 6 ohms. And that gives us 3 amps. So the total current for our circuit is 3 amps. We can write that down on our list of quantities, and we can also show that on our circuit there. All right now we know 
the total resistance and the total current for this circuit. Now, we need to take that knowledge and use it to figure out what's going on in our original circuit. So what we can do is we can say that in our equivalent circuit, there is three amps coming out of the power supply. And this circuit is equivalent to our first circuit, so that means that there must also be three amps coming out of the power supply in the first circuit. And if there's three amps coming out of the power supply, that current only has one place to go, so all of that current has to go through R1, and it also continues on through R2. So we can draw that in on our first circuit. We can say that there's three amps flowing through R1 and three amps flowing through R2. We can also write those values down in our list of quantities. We can say that there's three amps flowing through R1 and three amps flowing through R2 there. Now, the next thing that we can do, the last two quantities that we have to solve for are the voltage across R1 and the voltage across R2. Now we can figure out what those are by using Ohm's law again. Here we know the voltage, or I'm sorry, we know the, the current and the resistance for R1, and we know the current and resistance for R2. So we can use Ohm's law with each of those resistors individually. So let's do that. We're trying to find the voltage, so we write down Ohm's law, V equals I times R. In this case, we're trying to find the voltage for R1, so we say the total voltage for R1 is IR1 times R1. So here that's 3 amps times 2 ohms, which gives us 6 volts. So we can write that on our diagram and also show that in our list of quant quantities that we're trying to solve for. And we can repeat that process for R2. We say V equals I times R, so that's IR2 times R2, which is 3 amps times 4 ohms, which gives us 12 volts for R2. So we can write that down there. We have 12 volts on our diagram and 12 volts in our list of quantities. So that's how we can solve for, and we can find the voltage and current for each resistor in a series circuit. Remember, the basic strategy here was to find an equivalent resistance for our circuit, <clears throat> use Ohm's law on that equivalent resistance to find the current there, and then take that current back to our original circuit and use that current with our resistors to find the voltages across those resistors. So that's what we did. Now, there are a few things to notice about using Ohm's law on a series circuit. First of all, in a series circuit, all components have the same current flowing through them, but they may have different voltages. And the sum of all the voltages in a series circuit adds up to the original applied voltage. In this case, our applied voltage was 18 volts, and the first resistance voltage was 6 volts. The second resistor's voltage was 12 volts. So 6 plus 12 adds up to 18, our applied voltage. So let's do a brief recap of what we just found out. The way that we use Ohm's law in a series circuit is that we simplify that circuit down to one equivalent resistance. We use Ohm's law with that equivalent resistance to find the current, and then we use that current with our original circuit to find the voltages across our resistors. And remember, in a series circuit, the current must be the same through all components because there's only one path for the current to take, but the voltages can be different. And also, the sum of the voltages is equal to the original applied voltage. So that's a little bit about using Ohm's law in a series circuit. I hope you understand a little bit more about it now, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.